This list of potential vulnerabilities in web applications is actually pretty much covered throughout all of the videos in this series. Platform exploits being holes in the operating system, whether it's the server side, uh, the client side, or both, or even considering the platform being an internet browser. So internet browser vulnerabilities certainly fall into the category of platform exploits. Inappropriate content access, parameter tampering, traverse, uh, directory traversal, you're going to see actually all of these throughout this particular video and then other videos as well. What's important to remember is that there's simply a myriad of these application vulnerabilities that are potentially out there. It's important for us to check for as many of them as possible within the context of ensuring that we're bringing strength against weakness and we're looking for the stuff that's most likely going to be there and easily compromised. If, for example, you start looking at web applications or, or client server communications and you find that there's really good rigor around testing code and validating code, that there's a really good code development and testing process that includes a security development lifecycle type of, of approach, you may not want to spend a ton of time looking at the code itself. You may actually want to look at other stuff because there's more than likely not a lot of vulnerabilities there. However, there may be unpatched servers, or there may be servers that are misconfigured or inconsistent. Those are the kinds of opportunities that you're looking for as an ethical hacker because they're the ones that are going to allow you to get a weakness in. For example, a web farm of 10 or 15 servers may have one server that's kept as a backup or is cycled in and out that actually is unpatched or at a different software level than the rest of them. It's identifying that server and then exploiting that one or, or identifying the potential weaknesses there that's really key, especially if you've already footprinted and done your recon and found out that the version of all of this software is high enough that you're not going to find any very obvious flaws. Misconfigured and unpatched servers are absolutely wonderful finds for an ethical hacker. When there's a server that doesn't have the right configuration, when there's a server that hasn't had a software update in a while or hasn't had critical patches that we know contain potential exploit patches, those are great things. We look for those immediately because we know we can compromise them. Believe it or not, there's actually a lot of enterprises that don't configure their web servers correctly, whether they are simply not managed by folks that are focused on web servers and web server security, or whether there's some inconsistency in the implementation and deployment, or some other you know, potential flaw there, I actually find quite a few web servers that have one or more of these flaws. And I'll show you examples of, of several of these as we go through, allowing the directory traversal, so finding other files and folders in different directories, enabling services that should not be enabled, not configuring the web server to start or run in a minimized context. You'd be surprised how many web servers actually do allow remote login or administration, either through Microsoft terminal services or VNC connections or anything like that, even PC anywhere. You see a lot of that out there and it's just bizarre because you would think that that would be the one category of server that would not be exposed in that way, but you'd be wrong. They're more common than you'd imagine. Using the default username and password, installing the default website, taking the defaults without ever changing them is a recipe for disaster for administration. And finally, you've probably seen this yourself, displaying verbose logging to unauthenticated clients. I'll show you exactly what that looks like and why that's a problem.